Good morning, this is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News, and today I'm showing you an example of an MRI of a patient who presented with headaches for about three months, some visual deterioration over the period of a couple of months, and periodic nausea. We're starting towards the back of the brain. This is the cerebellum, the cerebrum. We're moving forward. First thing you see is these lateral ventricles are very large. So there must be some obstruction to spinal fluid flow. These are the choroid plexuses, these linear things in the ventricle. And they make spinal fluid, which then goes through a system of pipes to get actually to the outside of the brain in the spinal cord. We're starting to see the presence of a tumor here. You can see here this tumor clearly emanates from the from the cella. This is the cella carotid here, middle cerebral artery, cella, tumor filling the cella and extending upwards. Same thing here. Anterior portion of the tumor looks lobulated. Let's go to the sagittal views. This is the uh, mid-sagittal section, if you will. And what you see here is this very large tumor coming from the cella and growing upwards and backwards, basically filling the third ventricle. Uh, the, you can see the tumor contour has sort of come around the top of the pons. This is the pons, part of the brainstem. And it's going in between the two cerebral peduncles here. This is the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius, and this is blocked. That's why all the spinal fluid has backed up. The fourth ventricle is normal in size, so you know this is a problem with spinal fluid flow through the plumbing of the brain rather than uh, a problem with spinal fluid being absorbed in the arachnoid granulations, which are up here. Go just a little bit side to side. You can see this is a very large pituitary adenoma. Now clearly, uh, there must be a very thick layer of bone here in the floor of the cell intersica because this tumor didn't grow downwards invading bone. It simply went upwards and uh, caused this gentleman's problems. We'll have to see what the post-operative MRI looks like, but the patient had first an endoscopic transphenoidal attempt to try to get the tumor out, was not successful, and underwent a transcranial approach to try to remove tumor, but there is believed to be residual disease. Pathology showed it's a silent ACTH producing pituitary adenoma. Silent meaning that it, for some reason it didn't have the machinery to cleave POMC to make an active ACTH molecule, active meaning biologically active, or maybe it didn't have the machinery in the cells necessary to release ACTH once it was produced. So this patient basically presented with mass effect symptoms rather than Cushing syndrome. These are uh, known to be more aggressive tumors than your run of the mill uh, pituitary tumor or your ACTH producing pituitary tumor that also secretes ACTH. All right, so um, once again, Dr. Lewis Blevins showing you here an example of a very large silent ACTH producing tumor, would otherwise be thought to be a non-functioning tumor that uh, has exhibited the growth pattern of superior growth and caused blockage of spinal fluid flow, resulting in hydrocephalus and relevant symptoms. Have a good day.